as you can see, the garden isn't at its particularly flowering best at the moment. Complete opposite, and that's largely because I'm doing quite a bit of construction work in the garden. Well, I'm not doing most of it. The new fence going in, and that's going in tomorrow, so I've got to do the preparation work and get everything ready in time for that. Part of the reason why there's not been so many recent uploads in the last couple of days is because I've got my hands full with this, plus I'm doing work on the website. But there is something that I can show you against the back door. Well, you may remember that a few weeks ago, back in November, it was almost two months away now, I found a number of Purple Emperor larva, L3 larva, and along with Nick and Samantha Brownlee, we managed to locate in the end about 10 or 11 larva. It's a lot more than what we thought we'd got, and no doubt more will turn up as we go into the spring and the larva start to become active. But in a video from the time it showed that we removed some larva three larva from one oak which had been sort of partially cut down against the major oak and we brought them home went and collected them and brought them home because they will be safer here with me over winter and when they get through the winter they can be released back into the wild either as l3 larva or i can keep them rear them on and then hopefully release the adults at a later date. Those three, well four, came back that day. We did find another one on a branch which had been cut down in readiness for some tree removal up at uh, Seymour Grove. So four came back. But then I found some more larva in clips and old quarter. I found a total of four and within a few days one of those promptly disappeared along with the marker that I'd got in place. I looked and looked for it and couldn't find it at all. It hadn't relocated. And so what had become of it, I don't know. I then made the decision to remove the other three larvae from the nearby sallow and I brought them home as well. And they're now all residing in this. On this series of goat sallow cuttings, are a total of seven purple emperor larva or happily overwintering all at the sides of various buds on here. The reason I brought them back is that over the years there's been a really high mortality rate in the purple emperor larva that Nick and Samantha Brown and myself have monitored and it's probably as high as in the high 90s. Very few get to become adult butterflies. By taking these and bringing them home and keeping them at least until we get through the winter and the first warm days of spring when they could be relocated or I keep them and rear them through to adult and then we release the adult butterflies. At least these are safe. They're safe from predators, hopefully from disease and from well management you never know in Sherwood Forest you can go up there one day and something's been cut down you you have no idea when or where something is going to be taken down and there is no concern given to the caterpillars of the purple emperor butterfly at all and so these are safer here with me and we've got some protection I do keep them just outside on the yard here and they are fully exposed apart from a slight sort of bit of protection from a glass top table which they're half underneath but they're exposed to all the frost and the ice and the snow i keep them in a simple tube cage like that they're zipped up netted it's quite open and they will be absolutely fine 
It's a method that proved successful before. Purple Emperor caterpillars are very easy to get through the winter. You just do this, bring them home, leave them outside on food plant, and that's it. You don't touch them. You don't bring them inside during bad weather. You leave them outside. They need to be kept outside. You can't mollycoddle these and get away with it. They won't be having any of it and they'll pop the clogs. So, see if we can find one or two on here to show you. Well, here's one L3 Purple Emperor larva. The day that I brought them back, there was a little bit of movement because it was so mild. But since then, they haven't moved at all. And this is the kind of position they will remain in until the first warm days of spring. That's usually sort of late March or early April. And the first day they become active, the buds usually aren't out. And so they tend to relocate to a, a more likely bud or one that takes the fancy. Otherwise, they don't move. Now you may well be able to see the two caterpillars that are here. There's one at the side of where an old twig has snapped off at that joint there. And then there's this one just here. The one on the right of the screen is quite interesting because I did show this as a very well-marked individual very very well marked and nothing like this now they have all gone this typical sort of olive green color which purple emperor larva attain during the winter months so all are doing well all seven are doing very very well we have another two larva here you can see the larva at the top of the screen, you may well see that sort of silvery nature to the stem on which the larva is fixed. Well, that is the silken pad that these caterpillars lay down before going into hibernation. The second larva, the one at the bottom, is like the one above, right at the side of its favoured bud through which to overwinter at the side of. That's slightly differently marked than the other one, but both quite happily together at the side of their chosen bud. It's quite a big event when you've been keeping these outside for a few months over the winter. There's been no movement and then you get that first warm day of the spring and you see them out and about and having a wander around the chosen twigs. So I'm pleased to report that these are all doing very well. Well, that's them safely tucked away for another couple of months. We're having a cold spell here at the moment we've just had a, another flurry of snow it's pretty much just about covered the ground but it's gone now and we're into the realms of frosty nights and colder days these purple emperor caterpillars are absolutely fine in such conditions and to be quite honest it's probably better that we do get a more traditional sort of winter period and lots and lots of mild weather and rain that's the last thing we want but we'll see how these seven go on and then once it starts to warm up we'll see what we decide to do with them the trouble is I'm in favor of keeping them and, and rearing them to adulthood and then releasing them back at the site of being taken from it would be quite easy to re-release these back once the leaves on the goat sallow are starting to come out and these larvae start to become active. But then we're asking for the same problems and troubles that we've had in the last three, four years with regards to 
Herbal Emperor Lava. That's the fact that they go missing. We've had a lot that get into the fits and filings, so I've become really big chunky caterpillars, gone and gone almost within a day. And so I've pretty much made up my mind to keep these and rear them through to adults, but I will see how things go and how I feel nearer the time. I would hate to release these, continue monitoring them at the point of various releases, and these are from several points within the Sherwood Forest area. But then after monitoring them for sev several weeks and watching them go through the instars, I need to find that they all disappear. I'd love to know what it is, whether it's predation, disease, or somebody's taking them. I still haven't ruled that one out. But we'll see. But in the meantime, these are doing absolutely fine and are certainly safer here than if I'd left them up in the forest.